Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the US Secretary of Defence, Lloyd Austin, and an accompanying delegation at Arifa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of long-standing relations between Bahrain and the United States and the importance of furthering military coordination and defence cooperation. His Royal Highness further highlighted the US's role alongside international partners in safeguarding regional security and stability. His Royal Highness acknowledged the Kingdom's role in international relief and evacuation efforts from Afghanistan to the US, a joint operation symbolic of Bahrain's well-established strategic partnership with the United States. His Royal Highness affirmed that the humanitarian evacuation efforts aim to support the stability of Afghanistan. His Royal Highness acknowledged the role played by the Kingdom's American community in furthering Bahrain's development. For his part, the US Secretary of Defence emphasised the US's gratitude and appreciation for Bahrain's support in Afghan evacuation and relief efforts, noting that the Kingdom is a regional partner in international humanitarian operations. US Secretary of Defence noted that Bahrain and the US have established long-standing strategic ties, including matters related to military and defence. A number of other senior officials were in attendance. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the CEO of the Abu Dhabi Securities Exchange, Saeed Hamad Al Dahiri, in Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of relations between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates, which continue to receive the support of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of further cooperation and coordination to achieve growth and prosperity, benefiting both countries and their people. His Royal Highness commended the depth of Bahrain-UAE cooperation within the economic and financial sectors. He also stressed the importance of strengthening cooperation through encouraging and developing mutual investment opportunities, as well as facilitating increased bilateral financial and commercial exchange between private and public partnerships. The meeting was also attended by the chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the Ambassador of UAE to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamad bin Zayed Al Nayan, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Saeed Al Ziani. Upon the directives and follow-up of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Endurance Team participated in the opening ceremony of the Endurance World Championship for Young Riders and Juniors for 120 kilometres, which will be held in Ermelo, in Netherlands, with the participation of 110 riders representing 22 countries. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the status of the Royal Endurance Team in international participations embodies the unlimited support of the equestrian support received from His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the team's distinction during the opening ceremony promotes the Kingdom, which is part of Bahrain's goals in utilising sports to achieve Economic Vision 2030. His Highness stated that the participation proves that the endurance sport is on the right path towards development and prosperity, expressing confidence that the team will achieve the goals of this participation. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, paid a visit to the US Naval Forces Central Command in Jafar where he met the U.S. Secretary of Defence, Lloyd James Austin III, in the presence of the Minister of Defence Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al -Nawemi. The two sides reviewed the existing cooperation and friendship relations between Bahrain and the United States. 
the BDF chief affirmed the depth of the long-standing relations between the two friendly countries, hailing the steady progress at all levels, especially in the military and defence fields, to achieve the two countries' common interests. The Commander-in-Chief highlighted the concerted noble efforts exerted by the BDF personnel, along with the forces of friendly countries, to carry out humanitarian and relief operations at the international level, through facilitating the secure passage of the evacuees from Afghanistan, who were transported to the Royal Bahraini Air Force's ISA Air Base and then to their final destinations, praising the great role played by all those who contributed to undertaking such humanitarian operations to the fullest. The Council of Representatives Speaker Fasiya Zanal and the First Deputy Speaker of the Council Abdul Nabi Salman participated in the interactive general discussions as part of the Fifth World Conference of Speakers of Parliament held in Vienna. The parliamentary delegation affirmed that Bahrain has a distinguished experience in adopting and implementing national strategies that consolidate women's rights and emphasise the principle of equal opportunities. Zanal explained that the comprehensive democratic approach of His Majesty the King has established through the principles of the National Action Charter and the Constitution of Bahrain the process of equality and equal opportunities for both sexes, pointing out that the Kingdom was keen to take the initiative in ratifying international treaties and acceding to international conventions on women rights. She noted that the Supreme Council for Women, headed by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, played a major and pivotal role in passing laws and legislation and creating societal awareness of human women's rights. She also urged global parliaments to take effective steps with regards to problems related to important files and issues that will have an impact on countries and people. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, participated in the Fifth World Conference of Speakers of Parliament held by the Interparliamentary Union in Vienna. Al Saleh expressed pride in Bahrain's leading position internationally in providing health services in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to confront the coronavirus pandemic in a manner that ensures security and stability of citizens and residents in the Kingdom. Al Saleh lauded the efforts of the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Chairman stated that the Kingdom supports all the efforts related to combating terrorism by consolidating coexistence at all levels, hoping that the Conference's recommendations will contribute to prompting the international community to become a culture of cooperation and coexistence and the rejection of hate speech. He called for discussing a new global pact for gender equality, indicating Bahraini women's status as a result of the National Strategic Vision and His Majesty the King's Comprehensive Development Programme, which is the foundation for empowering women in various fields, obtaining their rights and contributing to modernising Bahrain. The Labour and Social Development Minister Jamil Hamidan held a meeting with the Regional Director for Arab States at the International Labour Organisation, the ILO. Ruba Jaradat on the sidelines in the 47th session of the Arab Labour Conference currently held in Cairo. The Minister reviewed the Kingdom's achievements in developing the work environment and its legislative infrastructure, stressing that the Government is continuing its efforts to enhance the work environment and enact legislation and law in line with international labour standards. For her part, Ruba Jaradat noted Bahrain's constant efforts to achieve gender equality in the work environment lauding the implementation of the wage protection system. She also stated that Bahrain's application of international labour standards consolidates its international status and makes it a model to be emulated for the countries of the region regarding the provision of social protection for workers. She also commended the measures taken by the Kingdom to confront COVID-19. The CEO of the Education and Training Quality Authority, Dr. Jawaha Shahin al mutaki participated in the media briefing in which she affirmed that the Education and Training Quality Authority continues to focus on developing the education and training sectors as well as all parties and components of the educational process in accordance with the general frameworks of Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 and the latest international standards and practices. She added that the coronavirus pandemic caused fundamental changes in education and training methodology worldwide, but Bahrain has proven its superior ability to face these challenges as a result of the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King and national efforts led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. 
She stressed that the authority was keen on presenting a number of initiatives that serve the training and educational processes and their continuous development to face any changes or challenges to the educational and training systems. A delegation from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs participated in the 17th Annual NATO Conference on Arms Control, Disarmament and Weapons of Mass Destruction, Non-Proliferation, held in the Danish capital, Copenhagen. The conference focused on the latest developments regarding the dangers of chemical weapons, proliferation and technological developments associated with ballistic missiles and the use of artificial intelligence in nuclear energy. Bahrain highlighted its stance of achieving international peace and security according to the visions of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Chief of Strategic Affairs Ambassador Nancy Abdullah Jamal highlighted the achievements of the government in Bahrain in maintaining its commitments to international treaties linked through its national legal and judicial legislation, stressing Bahrain's unequivocal stance that calls for the Middle East region to be free of weapons of mass destruction. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,152,839 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,094,297 had taken the second, and 264,361 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 967 with 111 recoveries and 139 registered new cases. 64 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 53 are contacts of active cases and 22 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.